On 14 December 1971, the first missile launch with a direct hit from a remotely piloted vehicle was successfully accomplished. The launch platform was the BGM-34A U.S. Air Force Teledyne Ryan Aeronautical remotely piloted vehicle. Designated as Model 234 by the contractor, it is capable of delivering a variety of stores, including the missile used in this test program, the Maverick AGM-65A, produced by Hughes Aircraft Company. The development of the Model 234 was in direct response to a United States Air Force Systems Command contract awarded on 4 March 1971. The primary objective of this defense suppression task evaluation was to prove the feasibility of delivering from an RPV an electro-optical seeking weapon on a designated target. Within weeks following the March 1971 go-ahead, the Air Force delivered to the contractor's plant in San Diego four obsolete special purpose aircraft. The aircraft were basic BQM-34A target drones with microwave command guidance and mid-air recovery systems installed. Built in 1965 for SAC training support, the four aircraft all had numerous flights to their credit. In order to expedite production, the Air Force and the contractor agreed to enter into a quick reaction program which obviated various routine, time-consuming procedures but did not sacrifice quality or reliability. Close liaison was effected between elements of engineering, manufacturing support, quality assurance, logistics, and manufacturing. This was accomplished by physically relocating all key members of these departments in a quick reaction shop putting hardware and people together. 27 weeks after contract go-ahead, the factory build-up of the RPVs was completed. This effort included modifications to the airframe and subsystems, design and installation of special equipment required to interface the missiles was completed. A new flight control box, RALAX, pitch dive control, and other units were easily adaptable to the standard BQM-34A airframe, including a nose-mounted, commercially produced TV targeting camera. The first functional test commenced on 23 July 1971. The same individuals who designed the RPV participated directly in the functional checkout at the factory and supported the U.S. Air Force 6514 Test Squadron during systems checkout at Edwards Air Force Base. Initial electrical continuity checks and missile interface compatibility tests with the pylon-mounted single rail launcher were accomplished. On the 2nd of September, 1971, the functional checkout was completed, which simulated the remote operation of the RPV. Remote firing of a Maverick and the remote launching of a Hobo were simulated. This successful test proved the Model 234 weapon systems interface and demonstrated weapon delivery capability. Delivery of the first Model 234 remotely piloted weapon system was effected on 13 September 1971. Mounted under the wing of an Air Force 6514 Test Squadron DC-130, the RPV was delivered to the flight test site four weeks ahead of schedule. This early achievement of preliminary test objectives enabled actual flight testing at Edwards to proceed earlier than originally anticipated. The uploading and first captive flight of RPV X-1 was accomplished on 21 September 1971. The purpose of the test was to functionally check out numerous subsystems of the total weapons system to ensure proper operation prior to the first free flight. 
five captive flights were required to resolve intermittent problems. On 5 October 1971, the first free flight was made without stores. Ten more flights over the Edwards range were required to verify the entire system. The range used for missile firing and mid-air recovery is located in the pyro delivery area in the southeast corner of the Edwards base. The use of this location for 234 program feasibility demonstration proved considerably more difficult than originally envisioned. Because of nearby populated areas and to meet range safety requirements, many tight turns were required to stay within prescribed boundaries. This resulted in a flight profile which differed significantly from a typical operational mission. The control van for the flights was located at the approximate center of the range. An existing control van was specially modified by Sperry Univac to handle additional commands. These modifications were necessary to actuate the proportional flight control system of the RPV and the proportional slewing mechanisms in the weapon's electro-optical seeker head. In the afternoon of 14 December 1971, nine months and ten days after go-ahead, aviation history was made. Launched at 9,000 feet above ground level, the RPV was flown from west to east by microwave command guidance from the control van. The RPV was flown at approximately 3,500 feet above the desert floor. During a descending left turn prior to the attack leg, at an altitude of 875 feet, the RPV with stores pulled 1.5 Gs in a 50 degree banking turn. The target for this test was a surveyed radar control van simulating the heart of a SAM site. In the final stages of the attack, the target was acquired by the RPV nose-mounted TV camera from a range of approximately five miles. At an indicated airspeed of 360 knots and at approximately three miles from the target, switch over from the RPV's nose camera to the missile's electro-optical seeker head was effective. At approximately two miles from the target, the missile was fired. The RPV remained stable following missile separation and simultaneous drop of a counterbalancing Mark 82 inert bomb. The Maverick missile achieved a velocity of 1,100 feet per second and took a little over nine seconds from release to target impact. Maverick missile fired did not contain a warhead, only a spotting charge and telemetry equipment. The standard mid-air recovery system was used to return the RPV for future missions. The effectiveness of a Maverick live missile was adequately demonstrated during Maverick Category 2 testing at Holloman Air Force Base. During the next flight, one week later, a second successful firing was accomplished with another direct hit on the target. With the RPV visually following the fired weapon, 
The nose-mounted video system gives the remote operator the capability of determining weapon accuracy and bomb damage assessment. The next weapon to be launched from the RPV was the Stubby Hobo. Developed by the Armament Development Test Center, Eglin Air Force Base, an existing Mark 84 Hobo electro-optical system was mated with a newly developed 350-pound warhead. The resulting 630-pound glide bomb was successfully launched on 10 February 1972 at Edwards Air Force Base. During the attack leg, lock-on was achieved at 5.5 nautical miles from the target. The glide bomb was released at a speed of 333 knots at an altitude of 525 feet AGL and at a distance of 9,600 feet from the target. Five days later, another successful launch with the glide bomb was accomplished. Because of a moderate sandstorm, lock-on was achieved at three nautical miles from the target. The glide bomb was released at a speed of 335 knots, 525 feet AGL, and 11,000 feet from the target. Again, both of these weapons did not contain a warhead only a spotting charge. The effectiveness of the stubby warhead was adequately demonstrated during the development test. The most recent weapon to be tested was the Shrike radar-seeking missile. In the latter part of April 1972, the total weapon system was loaded on a C-5A and transported from Edwards Air Force Base to the Dugway Proving Ground, Utah. Setup and final weapon systems functional checkout was accomplished. And on 5 May, one week after arrival, the Shrike was successfully launched from the RPV at a speed of 304 knots at an altitude of 13,000 feet MSF. The weapon did not contain a seeker system. The purpose of the test firing was to prove clean separation and no adverse effect of rocket plume ingestion into the RPV engine inlet. A similar flight was flown five days later with Shrike launched from the RPV with pitch attitude 27 degrees nose up at a speed of 320 knots. Other weapons are being interfaced with the RPV through continued test activity by the 6514th Test Squadron. The impressive results of these tests proves the Air Force Teledyne Ryan team has fielded a remotely piloted, accurate, and reliable weapons delivery system.